Hi there, my name's Christian and I'm part of the team here at Freedom Church. Welcome along to our online teaching. It's great to have you joining us. Today we have Paul speaking to us and he's he's talking from the book of Acts and, and the work of the Holy Spirit. And his talk is entitled, The Holy Spirit is Moving. Let's start off by praying, shall we? Lord, we just thank you that we can come together to worship you and learn more about you, Father. So we just ask that you open up our eyes and our ears to hear from you, Lord, and seal in any truths that you want us to take in, Lord. We just ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Bible reading from today is from 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, and it's verses 6 to 7. We do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but Not the wisdom of this age or the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. No, we declare God's wisdom, a mystery that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began. None of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. However, it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard and what no human mind has conceived. The things that God has prepared for those who love him. These are the things God has revealed to us by his spirit. And the spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. Now it's time to listen to the word that God has given Paul for us today. Hello. Today I'd like to talk about Acts 2, 5 to 28. And I'm going to read this from the Message Bible. It goes like this. There were many Jews staying in Jerusalem just then, devout pilgrims from all over the world. When they heard the sound, they came on the run. When they heard one after another their own mother tongues being spoken, they were blown away. They couldn't for the life of them figure out what was going on. They kept on saying, What is happening? What is going on at this time? Aren't these all Galileans? How come we're hearing them talk in their mother tongue and in various tongues? Parinthians, Medes, Elamites, visitors from Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappuccia, Pontus and Asia, Pyragatha and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya, beyond the Cyrene, immigrants from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, even Cretans and Arabs. They were speaking our languages, describing God's mighty works. Their heads were spinning. They couldn't make head nor tail of any of it. They talked back and forth, confused. What is going on here? Others choked, they're drunk, on cheap wine. That's when Peter stood up, backed by the other eleven, and spoke out with bold urgency. Fellow Jews, all of who are visiting Jerusalem, listen carefully and get this story straight. These people aren't drunk, as some of you suspect. They haven't had time to get drunk. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. This is what the prophet Joel announced would happen. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on every kind of people. Your sons will prophesy and also your daughters Your young men will see visions. Your old men dream dreams. When the time comes, I'll pour out my spirit, it says, on those who serve me, men and women both, and they'll prophesy. I set wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth below. 
blood and fire and billowing smoke, the sun turning black and the moon blood red before the day of the Lord arrives, the day tremendous and marvellous. And whoever calls out for help to me, God will be saved. Fellow Israelites, listen carefully to these words. Jesus of Nazarene, a man thoroughly accredited by God to you. The miracles and wonders and signs that God did through him are common knowledge. This Jesus, following the deliberate and well thought out plan of God, was betrayed by men who took the law into their own hands and was handed over to you. And you pinned him to a cross and killed him. But God untied those deep ropes and raised him from the up. Death was no match for him. David said it all. I saw God before me all time. Nothing can shake me. He's right by my side. I'm glad from the inside out, ecstatic. I've pinched my tent in the land of hope. I know you'll never dump me in Hades. You'll never ever smell the stench of death. I've got my feet on the life path with your face shining joy all around. This is a modern translation of this Acts passage. And I want to try and bring this into today. The question is, do you see this happening now? I've been challenged just recently. We were sitting out talking to a vicar. When we listen to what she does with seven churches under her control, seven churches. At the end of telling us all that she'd done, she turned to me and asked a very poignant question. What do you do? Uh, and I, I think I was convicted by the Holy Spirit here at that time. Because, well, we run this church in Great Hawksley. It seemed very lame to me against the seven churches she has under her control. I'm not sure if I was intimidated by her, but I was prompted by the Holy Spirit. And so after our meeting, I sat with the Lord and talked for a long while, me asking the question, well, Lord, what do I do? This was what I feel the answer came to me. The first uh, um, things he said to me, I want to tell you about the very first time the church we went to some 33 years ago. Two events have had a real impression upon me. The first was at Pentecost 1989. When after the talk, the vicar ended up praying with me and for me because I was overcome. I couldn't really explain the time what it was. But looking back, it had to be the Holy Spirit come to live within me in my sinfulness. He took me where I was. He didn't wait for me to be perfect in any way. He took me and all that I'd done wrong. This I know uh, when I was baptised in the Holy Spirit. But what I learned from this is that when the Holy Spirit comes strongly on me, it's usually emotional. I use the word strongly as the Holy Spirit is with us as soon as we accept Christ, Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour. But in times, I feel he comes strongly. My emotional response is that of just really crying as the Holy Spirit moves in my spirit. Usually I'm, I'm convicted by what grieves him. You know, we all have thoughts and feelings. We all have ideas, perhaps the wrong ones, 
But in some of them, we haven't had the light of the Holy Spirit shown on them. So we stay in our old ways for some time. I can remember giving advice to a person before I knew Christ. And now I've completely changed my stance. Some 45 years later, I, I was complete goingly, completely going in the other direction. At that time, I was thinking I was so right, but knowing now I was so, so wrong. And that's what the Holy Spirit does, I think. He changes us. He doesn't rush us. He has patience. I mean, this is just one of the fruits of the Spirit, isn't it? Patience. We also have love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The Holy Spirit is so important in our lives. He changes our perspective to Father's God's truth. Without that, we'll be walking in darkness, giving out wrong advice. I think the second time that was uh, brought to me, brought to my memory, was in 1991. When this happened uh, in our lives, it was Sunday the 3rd of the November. We had two boys of our own at that time. We also had staying with us Karen's sister's three boys, the oldest being six years old. And we were looking after five boys for all weekend. Two I had to go to bed in the morning, that's good. And that left me with three boys out in the garden. We were clearing up, it was autumn, the leaves were coming down. We would normally go to this church in the morning, but this church had a big confirmation service that evening with the bishop leading. We were to give our testimony on how we came to faith in Christ. For those who are unfamiliar with the Church of England confirmation services and things like that, is where a person who was baptised as a child can confirm their faith as Christ Jesus being their Lord and Saviour. My parents were not Christians, not that I know of. And this, in those days, was what was just done. It was the done thing. Probably they also acted on the assistance of my granny. Well, we were clearing the leaves. I had toy spades, toy wheelbarrows, but the boys wanted to use my forks, my spades, and my barrow. But all was going well. Lots of fun, fresh air, and we were actually moving some of the leaves into the bonfire. Then the unexpected happened. One of the boys swung my garden fork and somehow caught Liam, my son, in the eye with the fork prongs. Liam crumpled to the ground. He passed out. I carried him quite limp in my arms and laid him on the kitchen table. I asked Karen to phone quickly for an ambulance and I rushed over and got a cold compress on his eye. The ambulance team arrived, a man and a woman, and we were rushed to a and &E with blue lights, sirens, the whole business. He was taken straight into uh, uh, what seemed to me to be an intensive care unit. And it was about 11 a.m. in the Sunday morning. I remember being in the ambulance and talking to God. Why? Why is this my firstborn son? Why couldn't it have happened to me? All the pleading that parents do do and would do. I remember also making this rash promise that if Jesus Christ healed his eye, I would serve him for the rest of my life. They called in a uh, specialist. Uh, there was an eye sp surgeon come in. There was somebody, uh, somebody who's dealt in the brain, a brain specialist and a pediatrician. Many people came in on this Sunday morning. They came and went. 
The eye was so swollen by this time that they could not detect how serious the injury was. Much later, I left him in care of the nurses and about 3 p.m. I made a phone call to Karen, who was at home with the four other boys. And this is the first time I'd had been able to update her and told her what was going on uh, during those four hours. The church, where we were part of, had a prayer chain and Karen had called the prayer chain and it had gone round to several people to uh, pray for us at this time. Many of them were praying. We have one uh, similar now, and it's a WhatsApp group on Freedom Church. Works the same way. I remember in all the quick chat that we'd had together, Karen and myself, she told me of one phone call that she had had from one of the sweetest people that we knew. Always pristine probably always wearing a Laura Ashley dress. A lovely person, butter would melt in her mouth. If she said bother, you'd feel she would probably say sorry for saying it. I hope I've painted a, a picture of this really, really nice person. And she said the words to Karen, which I think were very strong for her. She said, I think, the enemy is trying to stop you getting confirmed tonight. And when Karen told me this, it seemed to me that something rose up inside of me. Some people talk about a, a red mist coming down on them in anger. This wasn't like that. But a strong resilience rose up in me. It came from deep within me. And I said to Karen, we are going. It wasn't anger, but it was that resilience deep from within me. It could only have been the Holy Spirit. Over the next three hours, there was, uh, there was a, a, a battle that I can only describe as a spiritual one. Our son, when I left the hospital, had not spoken or acknowledged me at all. I kept talking to him all the way through, telling him what was going on all the time. And he was being checked by a nurse still every five minutes they came in, just checking him, not looking at him, taking his pulse, temperature, everything like that. And I left him in the hands of his granny. At 6 p.m., he was still unconscious. We did get confirmed in our faith in Jesus Christ that night, in front of 500 people, a very powerful service. Karen was able to give a clear testimony of what was happening. And I stood silent, just a silent witness beside her, crying, an emotional wreck. It just, immediately I got on that stage again, it just struck me. The miracle in that was when I returned to the hospital to be with Liam all night, he had come round and he was sitting up in bed with Granny reading to him what I said to the Lord. He took us both up on that prayer that I had prayed in that ambulance. Lord, if you heal Liam's eye, I will serve you for the rest of my life. This was not the start but a significant moment in our walk with Jesus Christ. Knowing that the enemy would attack us in, in something that was so close to us as our children. And he would try anything to stop us doing what the Holy Spirit was leading us into. And that resilience still comes deep from within me when I have the knowing from the Holy Spirit of what he's asking me to do. Well, that's one of the big lessons I learned from this instant. And to the doctor's amazement over the following weeks, the three operations planned were cancelled because his eye had healed completely. Praise God. 
just going back to uh, the question that really stirred me because I, I, I had talked to this vicar and when I told her what we did, but I was asking God this now, what do I do? What do I do? A third memory brought up to me by the Holy Spirit. It, it was uh, back in 1995. It was what I call the shaking paper instant. Our children, uh, sorry, our church asked uh, different people to read out prayers. And, and, and this particular Sunday, they'd asked us as a family, Karen, myself and our three children. I'm not sure who said yes, whether it was me or Karen, but we were up there. I mean, it's not a problem standing on the stage with a microphone in front of 300 people, or is it? As we went up on that stage and stood there, it was me at the head of the family, the one that should be leading. I feel now that the Holy Spirit came upon me this time quite differently from the previous occasions. As I was standing there with my words on a piece of A4 paper like this, the piece of paper, I could not hold the paper still. It didn't matter if I held it with one hand or two hands. It was just shaking so much. Liam noticed. I mean, it was embarrassing. And said, Dad, I'll hold it for you. Needless to say, that whole experience did not go well with for me. Karen and the children were brilliant at saying their, their lines. Sitting back down, I would have loved the, the ground to open up and swallow me. So embarrassed. So, okay, Lord, why have you reminded me of this very embarrassing time in front of 300 people? And his reply went something like this. Well, that was before you had been anointed with my Holy Spirit. And look at you now. You don't tremble when you speak in front of people. Hmm. So this is what I learned about that experience. Because it was ongoing. It just didn't happen once. It continued on for some time. That while I wasn't able to speak out with great confidence, the Holy Spirit knows when we can use the gifts we've been given. And I know this one is a gift. So it's with this strongly embedded in, in my memory. I know the sitting in front of you right now, this morning, the working of the Holy Spirit is kept working through me. So we here we have uh, three instances of the Holy Spirit working in my life. I feel that the most important uh, of these three is the one about the resilience. Someone describes resilience as competence, confidence, co connection, character, contribution, and coping and control. I believe that's what some of the Holy Spirit has put in me over the course of time. His Spirit gives me the resilience I need not to draw back or not to fear. I also believe the Holy Spirit can change lives dramatically. And we don't have to be changed before he comes and visits us. It's when he does come that he, the changes happen over time. And it's not something we can say, I have, I have the Holy Spirit. I have a house, like, just like I have a house, I have a car. The Holy Spirit is always teaching us. We always have something to learn. And it's a sort of growing. We grow into the Holy Spirit by each day. It's so easy, I think, to compare our lives with somebody else. Do you find you do that? I find that it doesn't help me very much. In fact, it usually has a negative outcome on the situation or on me. See, Jesus Christ, we were created all differently. When 
He made me. He threw away the mould. So there's not another person like me. But let me continue with our, with our story at this time. By this time, we just wanted more. We wanted more of Jesus. We want to learn more and understand more of the Bible. And we had the chance to attend a two-year course held within our church called Christian Academy. It was uh, on once a fortnight on a Wednesday evening. And sometimes, well, I think we had four Saturdays uh, during the course of the term. And uh, we were given homework each time we met. And we were still hungry for more teaching as we saw such a need in the people around us. We wanted to understand how we could bring the truth of Jesus to them in such a way that their lives would be transformed. And for someone who was held back by dyslexia, it was hard. But as we cried out to God, he opened the door for us to go to LL Ministries next. By uh, doing miracle upon miracle to get us there. And our hearts were satisfied with what we learned and experienced. It was so, so much. And it was there that my dyslexia was healed by the Holy Spirit as people prayed for me. It was just one of the things the Holy Spirit did for us on the LL course called NETS. And what we learned to continue to teach has brought freedom to so many, all because of the power of the Holy Spirit. I think we are still very hungry for more of the Holy Spirit. Okay, God, where are you taking me with my question of what do I do? I believe his reply was, I want you to understand that without my Holy Spirit, you don't do anything of significance. Our story goes on. We went to uh, many things, but one of the things was an Alpha Conference in 1995. They had a time of inviting the Holy Spirit to minister to people. Please bear in mind that most of the people in this uh, at this time in this conference were church leaders. And we saw the Holy Spirit do incredible things in peoples, so much that we were open to, the, to the, his leading, the Holy Spirit's leading in a much stronger way. In fact, this was great preparation, what was to take place in, in some of our children. For six years, we went off to work alongside Richard Copsey at a, a, a summer camp called Wave Makers. And uh, this camp was up in Norfolk showground, probably had about 300 children from five to 15 years of age. The older ones, the, the uh, 12, 13, 14 and 15 used to help us. They were our helpers. One year I remember distinctly, we'd all worked so hard. And I think this was probably into the second day. And we had been, had the, the children from 9 a.m. till around the end of the day, which is about 8.30. And then after that, we would have team worship time, probably 40 to 50 people on the team. This worship went on for a, an, an hour, many of the team being impacted by the Holy Spirit. And this is where Liam, at that age, probably about 14 years of age, was impacted by the Holy Spirit. And also it affected Christian, his younger brother, his, who watched it so much and was challenged in a wonderful way. Really exciting times. That the Holy Spirit can not only work through church leaders, but also work through young children. In, in 2004, uh, I think it was February, we took a group of 15 teenagers to a youth conference. 
And at the end of the conference, or the, I think it was three days in conference, we ended up taking them all for a meal at Planet Hall at Hollywood afterwards in London. This Alpha Confidence Conference was a significant time for certainly many of them. But for David Steele, it's the time he was filled with the Holy Spirit. He testifies to this. Is there a, and we've had many incredible years. Many incredible. Two, 2008 was another incredible year. Early in July, a dear spiritual son was taken home. It's only 20 years of our age. And we were grieving. And then a few days later, on the 16th of July, we celebrated our oldest son's graduation from Essex University, the one who had his eye healed. And in September that year, the Holy Spirit opened the door for us to start an Alpha course in the Military Corrective Training Centre here in Colchester. Little did we know that over the 12 years that we were there, over 3,000 young men and some women were going to hear about Jesus Christ during our time there. I think uh, a verse that was uh, given to us at that time was 1 Corinthians 16, 9. And it says, because a great door for effective work has been opened to me. It's interesting, isn't it? Where the Holy Spirit opens a door, he gets the glory. And it's going to give him the glory that uh, he opened that door for us. So many, over 3,000 young people came through from the ages of 18 to 25, majority. And then on the 5th of October, the Holy Spirit uh, started this church, Freedom Church. It was really started off as a church with no name because we couldn't think of one. And then after several years, he gave us the name. It's Freedom Church. You're giving freedom. Bring the freedom to the people, to my people. And so much more. All of this only possible in the power of the Holy Spirit. I think the peace, the sorry, I think the pace of the Holy Spirit has been quickening. Certainly since 2020. We had the launch. Uh, we just had to launch in a modern way of communicating, didn't we? YouTube, Facebook, Zoom. We had to ask, find people to give talks uh, uh, using these the above ways. And, and this, uh, I found out just shortly, is where in 2021, one person's life was totally transformed. Because uh, uh, it was this week that I heard that she would not be doing what she is doing right now without listening to a series on our talks on YouTube. She's now given her life work fully to Christ and has become a full-time missionary, gifted with the ability to lead worship and work with children. She's going to have an impact on so many lives. I don't know this person personally, but it's just one of the many people who listened to our YouTube channel during the uh, during COVID. And the Lord spoke to her through it. Then uh, last year, 2021, we had an incredible time at what we call our summer camp. So much the Holy Spirit did at that camp in so many people's lives. One instance that was quite memorable, memorable to me is when Colin Lynn collected Tina and her, they were bringing her and they were coming on the way to their Sunday morning service at this camp. Well, they're driving along the road, they bridge uh, over the dual carriageway and they came upon a person trying to jump off the bridge and commit suicide. They were on the scene. They were able to help. Is that coincidence? Or is that a Holy Spirit? I tend to think. 
myself, it was the Holy Spirit. Even more recently, uh, we held events over the Queen's Jubilee weekend. We managed to reach out to so many people. And, and, I, and I have this feeling deep down inside me that the Holy Spirit is going to uh, bring something from that celebration. So much is just going to come from this. I can't say what it is. It hasn't happened yet. It's not like the past events. I can recount in detail what happened and what was gifted. But this one is, is just starting. It's just ongoing. So in recounting all the above, I feel the Holy Spirit saying, without me, you cannot achieve all I have reminded you of. But by being obedient, you have allowed me to work in many people's lives. That's what the Holy Spirit wants to do. He wants to work through us into other people's lives. To all of you who have supported us, in all our work, the blessings from the Holy Spirit are also credited to you. Without us working together, so many lives would not have been impacted or could be impacted in the future. Let's just ponder on these words we read to start this talk. And this is also just taken really straight out of Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on every kind of people. Goes on and says, your sons will prophesy. Also your daughters, young men will see visions. Your old men dream dreams when the time comes. And I suppose I ask that question, has it not come? Has it not come? So I pour out my spirit on those who serve me, men and women both, and they'll prophesy. They'll set wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and billowing smoke, the sun turning black and the moon blood red. Before the day of the Lord arrives, the day tremendous and marvellous. And whoever calls out for help to me, God will be saved. Where we are today, all that has happened has only been possible because of the Holy Spirit. Apart from him, we can't do anything of significance. The Holy Spirit has been at work and is at work and will continue to be at work. This is what he does. The Holy Spirit continues to move. He's doing, always doing new things. He invites all of us to be involved as a body, as a church. Are you excited? Are you expectant? I am. Thank you so much, Paul. That is a that's really encouraging, isn't it? How how God's Holy Spirit is able to work in new ways. Let's just close that talk by praying. And so, Lord, we just thank you. We thank you that you are at work, Lord. And we just ask, may we may we be a part of the new thing that you are doing. So, Holy Spirit, we just ask you to come, fill us up, and come and lead us to where you want us to go, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining Freedom Church Online. May you go away today encouraged and strengthened and full of the Lord. And I do hope you have a great week. And I will see you next week. God bless and goodbye.